Today I'm going to show you a few techniques that we use to remove strip screws from cell phones. Please be very careful with these methods. If your screwdriver slips or you make any other minor mistake along the way, it is possible to cause damage to the inside of your phone or to pretty much make the screw even more difficult to remove. Uh, before I talk about a couple of things that may have gone wrong, I want to point out that there are two different things that typically happen. And one will be that the head of the screw itself, so the place where you will place your driver, sometimes that gets stripped out. So you're not looking at a nice crosshair like that, but instead it looks rounded on, out on the inside. And the other thing that can happen is that the threads that go on the side of the screw can actually get damaged. And so can the part inside the phone that those threads go into. So there are similar but different remedies for those different situations. And of course, the first thing is to determine why your screw isn't coming out of the hole that you're putting it into. Is it the head that's stripped or is it the thread? Now with that said, I wanna also point out that one of the more common reasons that we see this happen is because a lot of people assume that Philips is Philips and in the case of cell phones, we have something called a PH000, which is a very small Philips bit that will fit into most of the internals on an iPhone. And then we have something else called a PH000, but this is a Japanese industrial standard. And if you look at the tip, you'll see it's a bit more blunt than the one on the left. And for that reason, when you interchange these two drivers, sometimes you end up causing damage to the screws. So long story short, I use this mostly for Samsungs and I typically use the PH00, although this does fit well enough to work. And with the triple zeros, those are generally gonna be used for iPhones and a few other brands. So it all kind of depends on what you're working with and it's good to know for sure that your blade or your tip is seated properly in the screw before you start turning it because the more you spin it around when it's not getting a grip, the more damage you're gonna do and the more difficult it's going to be to remove that screw. Now, if the head of the screw strips out, there are a few different things that you can do. And I'm actually missing a screw here. I'll explain that in just a second. But this is a pentalobe screw and this is a Phillips bit or blade. And this is what happens quite a bit when people are working on iPhones and they haven't done very many is they forget that this screw here is different than the one on the, on the inside. And if you interchange those two drivers, you're gonna have problems. So I have a pentalobe driver for the outside, Phillips for the inside, but they look very similar, you know, especially if you buy the same brand like this, or you have a kit where you switch out your, your uh, tips this way, and you might just forget to do that. So if I take my Phillips and start spinning it around in there, obviously I'm gonna have problems. Now, one thing that may happen is that your screw doesn't turn, and while your driver is spinning around, you're just digging a hole into the head, or another thing that might happen is that as you're turning the screw, it just spins around and doesn't come out of the phone. And that will generally indicate that either the threads on the screw or the hardware that you're working on has some sort of damage and they're not able to grip the way that they're supposed to. Now, in the case of a screw that looks like it's starting to wear on the outside, one of the techniques that we use, and this is kind of a home remedy, is basically to fill the gap between the correct size driver and what has been worn away on the screw itself. One method you can use to achieve that is to take a rubber band, ordinary household rubber band, put it over the end of your screwdriver, and sometimes that will be enough to fill in that gap so that you can get a grip and turn the screw and get it out of the phone. And I wanna point out, if you ever take a stripped screw out of a phone, set it aside, throw it away. Remember that it's not going to be a good idea to use that screw again. Now, if you don't have any luck with the rubber band or you don't happen to have one handy, you can also use good old duct tape. I've seen people put this over the end of a screwdriver blade and use that to fill in the gap well enough so that they can remove the screw. Personally, I haven't had a lot of luck with this, but uh, there are people that swear by it. So if that works for you or you're willing to give it a shot, it certainly isn't going to hurt. Um, Beyond that, if those methods aren't helping you to get the screw out of from where it's threaded into, usually the next best thing to do is to step up to a larger size. So if you've got a 0.8 pentalobe, you might be able to grab a 1.2, which is actually the pentalobe driver for a MacBook. And if there's enough uh, space worn away in there, you might get that to seat and be able to remove the screw that way. Now that's gonna be a big jump from 0.8 to 1.2. But again, depending on how worn it is, that might work out for you. You might actually even be able to switch over to a 
Torx bit, which is similar, but as we know, quite different than a pentalobe. But sometimes you can use one that's very close in size in order to get that screw started. And you probably have to go down to like a T2, maybe a T3 in order to get that inside there. If all of those fail, then my next suggestion is going to be one that I also use when there is a uh, screw that has a stripped thread. And this is what I had to do the other day. And that is to basically put some crazy glue on the end of the screwdriver and I'll show you that in the video shortly because I literally had to do that to get a screw out of the phone. If that also fails and you still have a screw stuck inside of your phone, you're starting to run out of options at this point. If you happen to have a soldering iron, you can solder your driver directly onto the screw so that it's physically attached and basically welded together and that should give you enough strength or a good enough grip so that you can take the screw out at that point. Now, a lot of people obviously won't have a soldering iron on hand, so if that's not an option for you, you're down to probably one of the last things, and that is to physically drill off the top of the screw's head. Now, you can do that a number of ways. If you have a precision drill bit, and you can get down in there and you can grind it away, that will remove the head off the screw and hopefully give you enough clearance so that you can open up the phone. And if you're on the inside, it will usually leave that remainder of the screw down inside of the barrel that it goes into. But again, it's some, in some situations, we don't have a lot of options for that. If you don't happen to have a drill that you can use, you can pick up something like a Torx bit and just once again, go progressively larger on the tip sizes until you get up to the point where it just basically keeps spinning around and grinds away the screw until the very end of the screw is just physically gone. Now, in my case, a couple days ago, I had a screw on this side, which I'm going to show you right now, and I will actually edit in the clip from when I had to take the screw out, and it didn't want to come out. And the reason why is because there's nothing to thread it into. I can just grab that screw, push it in, and it goes right inside the phone. So there's something missing or damaged on the inside. And if you've ever fixed an iPhone 5C or several of them, you might have run into that before because they were notorious for having a problem with the bottom screws not wanting to come out. And there are a few different approaches you could take to that. Now, one of them is to grab some tape. And once again, you can use duct tape for this, but I actually prefer this clear tape. Let me see if I can get it started here. You might be able to get that to bond to the screw well enough so that it sticks and then very carefully I would combine this with gravity so hold the phone this direction so it has a chance to kind of fall out and once in a while it will stick to the screw and pull it along with the tape and of course when I go to show you that it's not gonna work but um, it's probably better that it doesn't <laughs> because if it did we'd be done at this point and that obviously isn't going to work uh, another thing that you definitely want to do is make sure that you've magnetized your driver so sometimes just having a strong enough magnetic force on the end of this will allow it to stick to the screw enough that it comes out and I'll still kind of turn it as I'm pulling and you'll see that it is actually starting to come out so this screw I was able to retrieve with the magnet but that is not always going to be the case so I'm going to push it back inside by the way if you end up in a situation like this where you have a bit of clearance sometimes you can just take something like a pair of tweezers if you have a screw that spins around but doesn't quite want to lift out of the hole that it's in and just sort of give it some assistance in pulling it away from the housing or whatever it happens to be screwed into. Okay, so I don't have to turn this screw to get it inside the phone. I just have to push it once I get it lined up and it will kind of fall down into whatever whatever's in there, whatever hole was there and uh, isn't anymore. Now, another reason that we found on the 5Cs specifically, and that may be the case with this phone, that the screw doesn't want to come out, is not only is it not threaded, but also the screen is kind of lifting up and pushing the screw so it's crooked. So therefore, it is locked in there. It's not very, it's not a good uh, secure hold, but it prevents the screw from slipping out because the screen is putting some pressure on it. So what we used to do is just kind of put some pressure down here. You don't have to, you don't have to push very hard, but just enough to get the screen to sit down flat and you might be able to sh actually shake the screw so that it comes out or grab your screwdriver and put it in here and just very carefully, very slowly spin it around. And you can see that's not doing anything 
but you'll have to take my word. Sometimes it works. Now I can go back and magnetize again, or I have another option. I've got a rare earth magnet. If you haven't seen these before, they're super, super strong magnets, and you want to be very careful with them, especially when you're working inside of the phone, and obviously don't let your kids get a hold of these. So if they swallow them, bad things happen. Uh, but now that we have a very strong magnet on the end of this, I'm going to go ahead and put that slight pressure on the screen, put the, mat, uh, put the blade down in here, and very gently, without pushing against it, I'm just going to turn it and hope that that's going to pull the screw out. Or I might even be able to get the magnet directly on the screw and get it to come off, but it doesn't look like it. Not today. Um, so again, oh, there it goes. You see that? It is starting to come out kind of drop the magnet on there and let go and it started to pull now if it's if it's coming away this far I'll take something like a blade and just go right alongside of it get a grip and kind of pull it away from the phone and there you go and that would give me enough so that I could grab a hold of it from here but once again that doesn't always happen you know usually when I explain how to do something um, there's a certain number of people that try it and it doesn't work and it's happened to me also. So I want to give you probably what would be my last resort. Uh, you can try going in here with the corner of a razor blade and just kind of pry it out. But if you do that, be very careful because these things have been known to snap off and you don't want them to fly away and hit you in the face. So I definitely wear some safety goggles if you're trying a pry, uh, prying technique on this. Outside of that, we get down to what I think uh, short of soldering the screwdriver onto the screw is and that is to use crazy glue and right now I'm going to show you a clip from when I actually had to do that the other day. So one other option here is that if you've got some crazy glue and this is the Gorilla brand stuff you can put just a tiny drop of that on the end of your screwdriver and be very careful with this stuff it does bond skin instantly and anything it comes into contact to can end up being a big mess but once you've got just a little bit of glue on the tip of your driver you can set it in there and just hold it in place for about 10 seconds or so. They typically bond pretty fast. And then you'll see after that, I was able to very gently turn the screw and it did come out of the phone far enough so that I could grab a hold of it with my fingers and remove it the rest of the way. But once again, when you're inside the phone, you want to be very careful because you really don't want glue coming into contact with anything if possible. If you found the video helpful, like it, share it, check out my channel for more tutorials and product reviews, and most of all, remember to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section, and thanks for watching.